shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So because we broke God's commandments, it says we're going to serve our enemies, which God sent against us. He ain't developed a mindset to say, you know what? Look at all them strong Israelites over there. Let's go put them in slavery. It wasn't him that came up with that idea. God did that. He sent our enemies against us. Read. In hunger. In hunger. When you want something to eat, chicken. Who you got to serve? You own, you, you own this Kentucky Fried Chicken? Who owns it? You call him a white man. The Bible calls him your enemy. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We are Israel United in Christ, come to teach our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, who you are according to the Bible, and what it is that you must do in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Read what you got. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. The Bible says that ye shall know the truth. So if it says ye shall know the truth, then there's something that means that you don't know the truth. Read it again. And ye shall know the truth, uh -huh. and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says ye shall know the truth, and this truth that you learn is going to set you free. Free from what? Free from being slaves here in America. Free from being at the bus stop where you are rulers, kings, and princesses of the most high God. All right? It's high time that we wake up and realize who we are according to the Bible. Give me that in Romans. Give me that in Romans. High time. Romans. All right? For too long, we have sat and been comfortable in this condition. We're comfortable being on the bottom. We're comfortable being the last hire. All right? We're comfortable being the first fired. When this word comes out, we always notice our people running away from the words of the Most High God. Why is that? It's because we have been given a false perception, false ideas of this Bible. Just like you, sister, I heard you say that. You read the Bible sometimes, but a lot of it is white man white man knowledge right that's because that's that's the way we've been taught yeah. we've been raised up in this country to think that this bible was given to us by the so-called white man right. this bible was given to us by our ancestors given to them by the most high god that's right. Right. we got to wake up and come back to that read romans chapter 13 and verse 11 Real. and that knowing the time and that knowing the time knowing what time when you look at it to society today are you tired of seeing your brothers and sisters shot down in the street you're tired of seeing your brothers and sisters drugged down in stores, handcuffed for no reason, going through all the atrocities here in America? That's because you gotta wake up. Read it again. And that, knowing the time, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. Now it is high time to wake up out of sleep. Right. But you might say, what sleep? I ain't sleep. Shoot, I woke, I'm standing at the bus stop. Hey sister, I got a question. What's your nationality? What nation of people do you come from? This sister says African American. Come here, come a little closer, sister. We ain't gonna bite. We came out here for you. We came out here for this brother. We came out here for these brothers and sisters standing down here. This sister says that she's African American. Let me ask you, sister. What's your nationality? I'm just a black American. I'm okay. just a black. Person. So I want you to notice the difference. You say African American. This sister says just black. All right. But aren't y'all the same people? Yeah. Aren't y'all the same people, right? So why do you have two different answers when I say, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? My nationality, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Oh, the tribe right. of the Most High God. All right? But you didn't know that. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. This is prophecy, all right? All right. This is why we're out here. Because our people, they don't know who we are. They don't know who they are. We got people over here selling and giving away food on the Lord's Sabbath day. All right? They don't know God's laws. They'll say, well, we're doing what the Bible says. Are you really doing what the Bible says? No. No, you're not. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. This is for you, sister. This is for you, sister. What's your name? Gracie. Gracie. And what's your name? Trina. Trina. This is for you. Read. The ox knows his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. So what are we talking about here? God is making a distinction between two animals, a dumb and stubborn animal. One animal is dumb, the other is stubborn as hell. Read again. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. So these two dumb and stubborn animals, they know who their owner is, they know where their crib is, right? Read. But Israel, but who? But Israel, but the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all of you written on this sign right here, but Israel doeth not know, but Israel don't know. The Israelites don't know who they are. Read. Right. 
my people do is not consider. God says my people don't consider. So you got to understand what this is saying. He says my people. Did he say all people? He said, my people. So that means the Israelites, those written on this sign right here are who? God's people. So that means everybody's not God's people. All right? God chose you. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. But the, what you got to understand, what you got to take from this verse is, okay, if I'm not African-American and I'm not black, why haven't I been taught that? Why? How old are you? 29. For 29 years, you have thought that you were African-American. Yeah, you do know that? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, that. in knowing that, it, it doesn't do no, benefit you nothing just to know. You know why? Because there's something required of you. Right. If you know that you come from the 12 tribes of Israel, if you know that you're a Judite, all right, you come from the tribe of Judah, you must be keeping God's laws. Right. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 20, 25. I'm going to show you an easy law that you can change right now. But there's either one or two things that are going to happen. Either you're going to hear this law and you're going to do it, or you're going to hear this law and a big fence is going to go up. That's, that's going to be your so-called white man defense that goes up because you don't want to adhere to what God says you must be doing knowing you're an Israelite. That's right. Listen to this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what is being discussed here? What is being discussed? Read it again. I want you to listen. I want you to really listen. Sis, because this is the reason why we study day in and day out. Right. Coming to this rebellious house of Israel. Right. Listen, read. I'm li I want you to listen. Go. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Go. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What is being discussed here, brother? What is being discussed? You mean like what I'm... No, I'm, I'm asking what is being discussed in the scripture. You pointed at it. Article of clothing is being discussed, right? right. It says what? Read it. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman shall not. God said do not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall you, brother, put on a woman's garment. So God is, the, is, is discussing articles of clothing. I have a question. What do you have on right now that pertains to a man? What, pants? Give me the piece of. Pants. Yes, pants, sister. Pants were never given to the woman. All right? But here in America, our sisters say, well, these women pants you can't find women's pants in the bible right all right that is not an article of clothing that you should wear according to god the pants were given to the men all right because when we came out of egypt what did the men what were the men wearing they were dressing like the other nations you understand so god said make pants put put britches on you men are going to wear britches let the women wear dresses let them dress modest all right when you look at your ancestors right down here right Come and look at these pictures. They ain't just down here to be down here. These right here are down here for your, so you can see and get the edification. Where's the picture of the sister in the cotton field? Where is it at? All right. We don't have that one. All right. But when you look into history, when you look into history, right? Your great grandmother. Do you know your great grandmother? Have you ever met her? Saw? Did she ever wear pants? Oh yeah. Look on the flyer. When you look on that fly, you'll see that when we came over here in slavery, our ancestors picked cotton wearing dresses. Right. All right. Nowadays, our women have strayed so far away from what our ancestors have done. Our men have strayed so far away from what our people are, are, are normally did according to the Bible till they don't even know it. So right. pants, sister, wearing pants, that is a sin according to God. Right. I got oh, Your butt's can wait. Go to work. See, that's but another. Listen, listen oh, so check out the flyer. Can I make it to heaven by wearing pants? No, you're going to be put to death according to this Bible. All right? So, what about you, brother? I see you're smiling. Let me, let me talk to you. Come here. What's your name? Mello. What's it? What is it? Mello. Mello? How you doing, Mello? My name is Kalai. What's your nationality? African American. All right? So, let me ask you a question. Who was Leo Scipio Africanus? What about America Vespucci? 
Did you know that when you say that you're an African American, that you carry those two last names of so-called white men? Right. So if you say you're African American, that means you come from the seed of Leo Scipio Africanus, a so-called white man, and Amerigo Vespucci, another so-called white man. Are those your forefathers? They ain't your forefathers? So you're not an African American, brother. Right. Try again. What's your nationality? You're asking, you're, you just said that those are not your forefathers. I got a question. If Leo Scipio Africanus is a man, and Amerigo Vespucci is a man, and you call yourself African American, two white men, can two white men produce life? Can they make a baby and produce life? Well, how, how are you African American? How is that? How can you come from the seed of two so-called white men? Impossible, brother. Impossible. What we're showing you is that our leaders have failed us. All right? When we read over here in Isaiah 1 and 3, it said that you would not know who you are. Give me Jeremiah 17, verse 4. All right? This is prophecy. We're in the condition that we're in because we're God's chosen people. We're in the condition that we're in because we broke God's commandments. All right? And we continue to break God's commandments. And we're going to be in this condition until we change our mindset. Until we come back to this Bible and come back to God, you're going to constantly see your people in a hellish condition, in a poor state. They're going to always be at this bus stop. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So the Bible says, Melo, that you, even yourself, will discontinue from your heritage. When did that happen? When did you dis did you know that you had an heritage? What's your heritage? What is your heritage? Your heritage is God's laws, brother. God gave you his laws. That is your heritage. Within those laws are every, is everything that you need to guide yourself. As a man, you should grow a beard. As an Israelite man, you should have fringes on your clothes. These are simple laws that our churches on every corner have not given us. You got? Read what you got. So look, chapter 17 and verse 11. Listen to this, Melo. This is your heritage. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. So God gave us knowledge and the law of life for a heritage. But back in Jeremiah 17, read it again. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, you, even yourself, Melo, shall discontinue, shall discontinue. What does that mean? Discontinue. You work at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Have you ever noticed that they'll put certain things y'all have on the menu, right? It'll be for a limited time. After it's gone, what is that called? Discontinue. You're not going to be up there no more. All right? So when you see a can of or whatever on the shelf in Walmart, and you get it, and it's good, and then you go back you're looking for it, you're like, yeah, where the hell is that? It's been discontinued. It's gone. God said what? Thou shalt discontinue from thy heritage. You're going to discontinue from your heritage. Read. That I gave thee. That God gave thee. What was the heritage that we read that God gave you? His laws and the knowledge of everything on this planet. Right, right, right. But you don't have that no more. You've lost that. All right? We, we need to understand why. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Yeah. We're going to take you back. You got some time? Got a couple minutes? Yeah, I got to catch seven on the Okay, well, we're going to give you this word until seven whatever come. You stay right here and you're going to learn. You're going to learn. Now, even today, you shouldn't be working because you don't know, but today is the Lord's Sabbath day. Right. All right, we're not to work, buy, and sell on God's Sabbath day. Right. We lost that. That was in your heritage that was taken from you. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. On, but it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Now, who's talking? Moses. This was over 4,000 years ago. Moses said, but it shall come to pass. Future tense, read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if the nation of Israel, the people on this side, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, if you do not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments, to observe, meaning to look at, to understand, and to do, to let a word, Big action word though. Right. To do. You have to do God's commandments. Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said if we did not hearken unto his word to do these commandments, all these curses, you see, look around you. You're looking at a destroyed people right here. 
This is a destroyed people. All of these curses that you see your people going through shall come upon thee. Now let's take a look at some of these curses to see what people is this talking about. Huh? Give me verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. God said that your sons and daughters are going to be given to another people. What's that called? Your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. What is that called? Okay, what, what is it called? In history, what was that called? Your sons and daughters given to another people. Your children of your people taken away from you and given to another nation of people. What was that called? Slavery, brother. That was called slavery. This is the understanding that you got to get when you're reading this Bible. That's why the sister that said it's an all white man knowledge. No, this is black history right here. Right. In, in black and white. This is black history right here. This is what happened to you. This is your people. All right. Read it again so the brothers can understand. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Yeah, yeah. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read on. And thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. So your eyes, you're going to see your children getting taken away from you, and there ain't going to be nothing you can do. You're going to long for them all the day long. You ever seen Roots? You ever seen 12 Years a Slave? You see how the sister wailed and cried the whole movie? Solomon was like, shut up! She said, wouldn't you cry if your kids was taken away from you? Wouldn't you cry and do the same? This is what's happened. And what's so crafty about it is your enemy, the so-called white man, he puts your history right in your face. Right. He puts it right in your face, and you look at it and go, <laughs> oh, man, that's such a good movie. That was, that was awesome. That was great. What a good movie. But what did you pick up out of the movie? He showed you that he's the damn devil the Bible speaks of, and we're God's chosen people. That's you were chosen from the beginning. You're right. still chosen, but you must change. Right. You must turn away from your evil ways. Right. All right, got a question? I see your hand coming up. All right, you got to turn, bro. You got to turn from your ways. Your evil, you may not, you may say, well, evil, I'm a good person, right? I'm a good man. I don't do no evil. You don't do evil? All right? So in knowing, in knowing that, you should be questioning at, all right, what level of evil am I am, am I involved in? You understand? What should I be doing according to the Bible? I just learned that I'm not an African American. I just learned that I'm not black. I just learned that I'm actually of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. From the tribe of what? Which tribe do you come from on this side? On this side is what God calls you. On this side is what you have learned that you are in slavery here in America. So, according to God, what is your name? You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Look on the back of the flyer. Look on the back right there. On the back, it lists the 12 tribes. You might ask, how do we know that? How do we know that, that you're from the tribe, the, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel? Give me uh, Genesis 49 name. I'm going to show you something, brother. This Bible, once you learn... And understand how God is dealing with you, you're going to get understanding of this Bible. Right. Your level of understanding is going to increase. Then you're going to figure out and know exactly who you are, where you're at, and what you must do in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because I'm hey. everybody said they want to go to heaven. What's that saying? Everybody want to go to heaven. Nobody want to die. Nobody don't want to die. But we, standing in purple, strong for the Lord, we understand that if we die in the Lord, ain't no pressure. We coming right back. Hey. We're going to rule this earth. We're going to rule this earth. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. So the Bible says, Judah, thou art he whom his brethren shall praise. What are we talking about? We are going to find out where Judah is in these last days. How do we know that these brothers and sisters walking up and down the street have a 99.9% .9 chance of being from the tribe of Judah. Because we understand where we're at in these last days. We understand where we have been scattered throughout history. We understand that our brothers have no idea where they come from. Hey, brother. Brother in the red cap. What's your name, brother? Jay. Where you, where you from, brother? Slave. Made in America. Columbia, South Carolina. That's not who you are. That's who you think you are. All right? Read what you got. Yo. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Yo. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall pray. Come on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. So the Bible says what? Judah, thou art he whom his brethren shall praise, and thy hands shall be in the neck of your enemy. Most people reading this have no idea what that is talking about. 
Yo. All right? If we were enemies, if my hand, if your neck was in my hand, what does that mean? We're in close proximity, right? That's right. We're in very close proximity. Yo. So in these last days, what's being described is where the 12 tribes of Israel is going to be. All right? He's telling his sons where they're going to be at. Jacob is telling his sons where they're going to be at in the last days. He told Yo. Judah, your hand is going to be in the neck of your enemy. When you look out into society, whose neck, whose neck is in the hand of their enemy? It's you, brother. It's your brother shot down in the street every day. Yeah. All right? It's your people last high first five. It's you got to work on the Sabbath day. You're in the land of your enemy. But when you repent, keep these commandments and figure out, oh, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. All right? I got to do these laws. I got to teach my people. All right? Your brother is going to do what? Shall bow down before thee. Read. Judah is a lion's well. Uh -huh. Read. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stopped down, he stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall, who shall rouse him up? So there was a lot said right there, but the simple breakdown of that is, as, a, as an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you are a lion, bro. Right. But for so many years in this country, that lion has been put to sleep. He's been given an antidote that's called yeah. him to lay down and couch in a slumber. Yeah. He doesn't know that he's a lion. He thinks yeah. he's a cat. All right? But you're a lion. Crouch down. When he was crouched down, read it again. What did it say? Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. So when a lion crouches like this, what does it do? When lion sees his prey, how does a lion act? It crouches down. All right? It's about to pounce. It's about to jump and, and grab whatever, is, whatever his prey is, right? So you're a lion. We did crouch down. When did this happen? In the 50s, in the 60s, when you had the uh, you have uh, certain Black movements out here, slick. You had uh, what? Black, Black, Black Panthers. You had all these organizations created by our brothers, where they understood that. Hold on, something ain't right in this country. Why are we treated the way we're treated? We gotta do something about it. So we did crouch, but what happened? Your friend, the so-called white man, saw you coming up, and he implemented drugs. He implemented. Uh, 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 white women, everything into your your community that will bring you down and keep you down. So now we've been crouching since that lion hasn't pounced yet. But today you're looking at a street full of lions that are pouncing on our prey. Where is the prey? The prey is in your mind, brother. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, all of these things, birthdays. This is the so-called white man, our philosophy wrapped around your mind. We know that you're from the house of Judah. We know that you're from the tribe of Judah because you're in the land of your enemy. All right? You got to come up out of that mindset. You said that you don't celebrate what? When you get up. Halloween? What do you celebrate? Tell me. You celebrate Christmas, then you celebrate your enemy. You celebrate your enemy's uh, ho ho a holiday, which is a hell of a day. You celebrate Thanksgiving, you celebrate the slaughter of the Indians, your brothers. All right? When you look on that tribe, when you look on that sign, you see Gad, Reuben. These are the uh, so-called uh, Indians who were here before the so-called white man even got here. They slaughtered them. Read what you got. I know you it. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Come on. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. The Bible says, beware, lest any man. What man? Go back to Deuteronomy, I mean, uh, yeah, Deuteronomy 28. What man? What man is this Bible talking about? It, say, it ain't say beware lest the devil or a spirit. It said beware lest any man spoil you. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Through philosophy. Thanksgiving is a philosophy. Christmas is a lying philosophy. Right. Philosophy and vain deceit. And vain deceit. All right? You got to be aware of that. So in celebrating that, you've been celebrating a deceitful philosophy. Because it has deceived you into thinking, I bet when you celebrate Christmas, you think this guy right here, this guy right here is Christ. Right? When you're celebrating Christmas, the majority of our people, you say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't think that's Christ. I got a question. I was about to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'll, 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 what's your question? Well, you, you said... Jesus had what, war yeah, I ain't say that. The Bible said that. Yeah, the Bible said that. You know what I'm saying? As, as we, as you know, human beings, what's war? You know, that's a sheep. Yeah, but it's it's giving you a sign. We are gonna go into that too. All right, give me Deuteronomy 28, uh, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies. 
which the Lord shall send against thee. So because we broke God's commandments, it says we're going to serve our enemies, which God sent against us. He ain't developed a mindset to say, you know what? Look at all them strong Israelites over there. Let's go put them in slavery. It wasn't him that came up with that idea. God did that. He sent our enemies against us. Read. In hunger. In hunger. When you want something to eat, chicken. Who you got to serve? You own, you, you own this Kentucky Fried Chicken? Who owns it? You call him a white man. The Bible calls him your enemy. Read. And in thirst. In thirst, you're going to have to serve your enemy. And in nakedness, when you want clothes to put on your back, when you want a toothpick, a toothbrush, toothpaste, socks, when you want drawers, when you want a piece of paper to write on, when you want anything in life, read. And in what of all things, anything you want, I don't care what it is, you can desire anything. Because we broke God's commandments, guess what? You're going to have to get it from our enemies. Read. And he, and what? And he, you called him the white man, but God said what? And he, he, that so-called white man, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He gonna do what? What's that right there? When you look on that, on the front of that paper, look at your flyer. You see a boat full of Israelites with yokes of iron upon their neck. Yeah. Who put that yoke of iron upon your neck? The so-called white man. But the Bible says what? And he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he have destroyed thee. Until you're destroyed. Until you think, I'm, a, I'm an African American. You're destroyed, brother. Yo. You have been destroyed, brother. You understand? Right. Is this really setting in? When you, when those jokes of iron came off of your neck, came off of our ancestors' neck, guess what that symbolized? They are destroyed. Oh. They don't know that they're Israelites. They don't know who they are, right. where they come from, or where they're going. When the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863, the, the slaves was free. They was running down the street like, oh, we free, we free. Then they got down the road and was like, but where we going to stay? Bring it on. Hello. What, 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 what we going to eat? Oh, snap, I'm going back to Massa. I'm going, Massa, I come back. I come back to you, Massa. Can I come back to you, Massa? I work, I work for free. Can I stay here? You're destroyed now, brother. Now, we don't even think about it. When you get an application to fill out, you go on the application, you happily check African American. Because you don't know who you are. I don't check every, I put other. Other Israelite tribe of Judah. You can hire me or fire me, I don't care. I'm an entrepreneur. God made this planet Earth for me. I'm going to use the resources on this Earth to get what I need. And if I can't get it, I'm coming to my brothers. That's why we're here. You understand that? You have been destroyed. When those yokes of iron came off of your neck, that symbolized a destroyed people. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org